okay? Because you see right there where you have your internal carotid. Your right and left common carotid comes up to the carotid sinus on the, the neck area and branches into the external and internal carotid. So if you're looking at this model right here, it kind of shows you that. So you can see the two roots by which you can get up into that area. Now, both of these bottles are great because you can see not only your common carotid, but you can also see that vertebral artery running through your vertebral foramen. Um, if you remember your cervical vertebrae, your cervical vertebrae is the only vertebrae that has a transverse foramen. And that hole is there for the vertebral artery to run through. So you can see your vertebral artery here coming up, coming up, coming up, and then turning and going through uh, the foramen magnum. Here I can see my right and left common carotid. That's how this common carotid comes up and splits. It gives me an external and an internal. The internal actually goes on up and goes through what? My carotid canal inside the petrous portion of the temporal bone and that comes on up into here internal carotid and feeds into the circle of wills so you have two ways to get into that area that's what i'm showing you that's what i'm showing you you have two ways to enter into that area so if you have a blockage of your common carotid artery, you can actually cut off flow to the circle of willis. Okay, and lots of people have blockage in that artery and they cut off some flow to the brain. Okay, now we want to trace a drop of blood. Okay. And here, starting in the ascending aorta, trace a drop of blood to the frontal lobe near the left side then back to the heart. Oh, I'm going to write it down. Did everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can break that off. If I see any racers. Mm -hmm. Separate your boxes. 